Matthew Baker, Maastricht University. Static materials are no longer enough. Engineering dynamics into materials for tissue regeneration. All right, everybody, we're going to start off with a pop quiz. I'm going to show you two photos, and you have 10 seconds. I have a timer here to tell me or to think about what are the similarities between the two photos. We have a chair, and we have the human body. It's not so easy, is it? And there's a, there's a reason. Current bio materials versus tissues, I'm gonna say there's a dichotomy between the two. On one side, you have synthetic materials. This is like your chair, it's a simplification. But your synthetic materials are built from covalent bonds and inherently are static. They do quite a good job, they're strong, but they fail at one thing. The human body, on the other hand, is built from covalent and non-covalent interactions and so your tissue ends up being slightly dynamic. Now these timescales can range from minutes all the way to months. So we want to address this. And how we want to address this? Via self-assembly. Self-assembly, as a definition, is the spontaneous association of molecules under equilibrium conditions into stable and structurally well-defined aggregates. Now that's just a fancy way of saying we play with Legos. All right? We build molecules that have a certain shape, a certain function, so we can combine these in a unique way, if we'll click again, into a functional architecture. Now, humans are like to say that they're creative, but we're actually not. If you'll click one more time, you'll see that the human body is quite capable of this of itself. The cell membrane is a beautiful example of self-assembly. Now, if you'll click four times through, you'll see that this is a parallel and controllable process, gives you dynamic structures, it's self-correcting and self-healing, and the structure reflects the information uh, coded in the individual components. I have control over how these assemble based on how I build them. Now, the scientific slide, what have we done? This is a bit of work from my postdoc that showed the basis for this approach, and then I'll show you what I do in my independent career. We started with BTAs at TUE. What's nice about these, if you click one more time, they stack up into nice, one-dimensional, well-defined aggregates in water, spontaneously. And click two, through three times. How big? You can see by cryo-TEM, they're quite large, microns long. We can functionalize these with functional peptides, for example, your simple adhesive RGD, and they keep their shape and they incorporate, and we can even grow organoids within the material. Now I say grow, we just don't kill them, there's a lot of work <coughs> to be done, but it can go. Now if you'll click through three more times, in my independent career, we're gonna to move towards uh, host guest chemistry, using these to create hydrogels and dynamic networks. Nice thing about this is that you can go from a gel to a liquid and back again reversibly, and you'll click through twice, we will be mainly using these for 3D printing, as we've already talked to some people about, and also set these up as a platform to understand cell material interactions. Thank you.